We've all experienced it. People who treated us well and people who treated us like crap. I don't know about you, but those who treat me right, I want to remember the traits and try to pass it forward. But when someone is treating me wrong, I want to remember the feeling and definitely try not to let others feel the same way. You feeling me? All right, so welcome to the dang good show. Life as it is is already tough. Why not make it a little bit more comfortable with some fun? Each episode, I will deliver straight facts to inspire positive change so you can live a dang good life. If you want to learn how to be more social, self-aware, or just want to hear some great advice and life adventures with a few laughs, then this show is definitely for you. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm your host C. Dang from the city of beautiful Vancouver in British Columbia, Canada. You can catch me on Instagram at Christine underscore Dang or my website c-dang. Com. This is episode 002 and I'm already super super stoked from all the messages and support I've received on my Instagram and Facebook page. Thank you so much for taking the time to message me and thank you for sharing this podcast with your friends and family. My aim for this show is to inspire and motivate 500,000 people to live a dang good life. Please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. And while you're at it, if you feel the information I will be providing is valuable, give me a thumbs up, like, and good ratings. Before we start, I wanted to touch base since I had a few questions from some of you about the links I've mentioned in the last episode. You can find them under each episode blurb from what, whichever platform that you're listening to, but I know sometimes the link doesn't show, so the best bet is to visit thedankedshow.com. I totally appreciate the feedback, fam. All right, today we are going to talk about how you treat others says a lot about you and I will give you five tips. It may seem like a simple subject but it runs a lot deeper than you think. Most of the time how we treat others is a reflection of who we are. So if you are treating someone shitty, well for most, they'll say you're a shitty person. (laughs) But from a positive view, I would view it as you just had a shitty day and didn't realize you were taking it out on others. As T.H. Thomas would say, Be kind. Everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. And for those who are treating others well, well, they have a positive outlook and their energy really does shine. Okay, so I read an article on Inc.com about how you treat others is how you invite them to treat you. The first sentence was, if you want to know how others treat you, the best starting place is to look at how you treat others. As much as I want to agree to the statement, I want to rephrase it just a little bit. If you want to know how others treat you, the best starting place is to look at how you treat yourself and others because your relationship with yourself sets the tone for every other relationship you will have. Let that sink in. Your relationship with yourself sets the tone for every other relationship you have. And if you don't like the way you're treated, there's only one course of action. You can change your own behavior because you can't change anyone else's. Think of it this way. Relationship functions like a mirror. Eventually, that change will reflect back onto how you were treated. For those who have gotten to know me, I talk a lot about leading by example because how you are will attract others like you. Like attracts like. It's a law of attraction in the works. Okay, so you might be asking, okay, Dang, so how do we get others to treat us better? I thought you would never ask. I'm going to give you five tips that will get others to treat you better. Number one, know your worth and be kind. First and foremost, you gotta remember that not everyone is like you. You are a unique person and there ain't nobody else out there like you. That's right, that right there is a great reason to know and own your worthiness. If you don't respect yourself, Honey, your energy doesn't lie. People will feel it. And there's a high chance that they won't appreciate you too. Sometimes we get lost in a sauce with our thoughts that we are not worthy of love, success, or anything significant. We are our own worst critic. I am still guilty of this, but I am definitely kinder to myself. And today, I can confidently say I love myself more than I ever did before. That rhymes. (laughs) Anyways... 
For the last few years, one of the most challenging experiences I have ever endured is enlightenment. Oh, it's a process for a lifetime, but well worth all the effort. We all think that enlightenment entails becoming better and being happier. Well, I'm here to tell you it's a destructive process. You break down a lot of walls and face a lot of uncomfortable truth that a lot of people can't face themselves. Okay, so let's be honest. Is that you right now, what I just described? Because I will admit, I was too, and I'm still figuring it out. But one thing for sure a method to reach enlightenment that's been proven from research and by monks is meditation. I started my practice in November of 2017 with the help of an app called Headspace. It changed my life, guys. I was so anxious and had millions of thoughts going through my mind, and I was probably borderline depressed. If this sounds like you, I highly recommend you try meditation. And the best tool to use is that's right, Headspace. Now, being mindful, there's this raw beauty that comes out of it because we become more loving. Empathetic and patient with ourselves and the people around us. Okay, there's a perfect analogy for this. The lotus flower, which is so beautiful and magical if you get a chance to see one in person. For anyone who knows about the lotus flower, it grows through the muddy waters as it calls for the sun each morning, breaks through the surface of water, and blooms untouched by the mud. Each petal remains clean and pure. Closing at night, it sinks back below the surface water. Only to resurface again in the morning. Now, the lotus is a reminder that in a world riddled with fear, we can only stay loving inside. Like the lotus, we too can grow through dark times and difficulties, and we can rise again and again from a real place within. So, to dive a little deeper, the lotus flower symbolizes purity and harmony. It's reflective of beauty, spiritual awakening, potential rebirth, creation, and eternity. Isn't that just so beautiful? Beautiful. I like to think that our journey for self-love and to live a more fulfilling life is like that of a lotus flower. It's the most courageous thing anyone can do for themselves. The best part of owning your self-worth is when you start to pay attention and take care of your body, mind, and spirit. Be kind. Take care of yourself and know your worth. Number two, understand that your perspective is different from others. Now, besides respecting yourself, you gotta respect other people's thoughts, opinions, and history. Your way may be different from their approach. Your level of perspective is different from theirs. This is how argument starts from misunderstandings. I say this with a heavy heart because I hear so many stories about toxic relationships, which I have also experienced, and we've all heard it before. You know, the he said, she said, and the I'm right and they're wrong, and they don't fucking get it. They don't understand. I think you get the point. Many situations could get your blood boiling, but I firmly believe if you take a few steps back, put your ego aside, and just listen, and I and I mean really listen. People just want to be heard and loved. Every human being wants this. We want to connect with others. But sometimes some particular individuals just want to be proven right to make sure you know they are correct and you are wrong. And who knows? I may have treated some people like this in the past when I was way younger and didn't know any better. Now, if you are what I just described, please listen carefully. No one likes to hear how great you are by making someone else feel small. Never look down on someone because you have no idea how far that person will end up. Or how successful he or she will be. The great thing is, we can learn from our mistakes and grow. Here's what I found on Instagram that explains it best, and I'm not gonna lie, it made me laugh because it spoke a lot of truth. Okay, here it goes. I don't even argue with people anymore because I started to realize that everyone only understands from their level of perception. So even if you tell me two plus two equals ten, you're right. Enjoy. 
<laughs> I love that post so much because it's just so perfect. A great example of let's agree to disagree and practicing the art of letting go. Now, let's just say you are in a pickled situation and an argument is gonna happen. Instead of feeding the fire with fire, for example, raising your voice to be heard and get more angry, instead try speaking softly. It forces active listening, which leads to proactive thinking. When they are listening and thinking, they are not yelling, arguing, or talking. Otherwise, you are just two people barking at each other like little chihuahuas, a competition of who can be louder. Which leads me to the next part. Number three, everyone has a story. Try not to judge people by their past. Instead, try to support and show some love. We all have a history. It could be something we have gone through in the past or something we're still dealing with. Whatever the history, just know that people do change and can grow. Instead of shaming, which cuts people's growth and a chance for them to change, lead by example. Be the bigger person by being compassionate and empathetic to those in a bad place. So remember, every day people are fighting a battle you know nothing about. Just be because you don't see or try to understand their struggles, it doesn't mean they are not hurting. Remember, every relationship made and every person you meet is no accident. They came into your life for a reason whether, you made, whether they made you feel good or bad. There's always a lesson to be learned. I find the biggest lesson comes from those who makes you feel small or bad about yourself. Why? Because of three things. One, you will learn to recognize toxic behaviors and will be more conscious when you come across another person with similar behaviors. Basically, you'll know who to avoid. Two, you will learn what you can tolerate and then find ways to deal with them. And three, you will learn to understand why people do what they do. Here's a little secret. It's usually due to insecurities and the lack of confidence. When people feel small, they try to act bigger with their aggression. It's what they call the little man syndrome, which we have all experienced in one form or another. Usually when people are very unpleasant, I'm nicer and a lot more patient with them because they lack a lot of love in their life. I made a video on how you can deal with assholes. <laughs> I'll be sure to leave a link in the episode's note. You can find it by visiting thedanggoodshow.com. So the moral point three is just treat all walks of life with respect and let them go on their own journey. It's not your life, it's theirs. Number four, be curious. Listen with curiosity, speak with candor, and act with integrity. The article I mentioned earlier from Inc.com says it beautifully. And I quote, Listening and curiosity allows relationships to thrive. Speaking your truth will enable people to be honest with themselves and with you. And acting with integrity keeps relationships on a high standard. Relationship needs curiosity to grow, candor to deepen, and integrity to continue. Let that last bit sink in. Relationships need curiosity to grow, candor to deepen, and integrity to continue. So let's dive a little deeper with this fourth point, which is again, listen with curiosity, speak with candor, and act with integrity. Listening with curiosity. When you start listening with interest, your relationship will improve significantly as you gain the trust and respect of others. Listening is the best form of respect for other people, and it's a powerful tool to build quality relationships. And while you're at it, making eye contact is the best way to let your speaker know you are investing time to want to hear what they are saying. Listening is a great way to learn about the other person's perspective. So don't be too quick to judge others. Try to ask open-ended questions. Like for example, if someone was talking about a shirt they bought, ask them what was it about the shirt that they liked the most. Or if they talk about a trip they went on, ask them where their favorite spots were and why. When we ask open-ended questions, it just means that you are willing to invest more time to get to know them better. Speaking with candor. Now, for those who don't know what candor is, 
It's the state or quality of being frank, open, and sincere in speeches or expressions. It's free from reservation and disguise. It really means being straightforward, guys. There now here's the thing: speaking with candor does take practice, and it's well worth the effort because. It will let you connect with people on a much deeper level. When you speak with sincerity and honesty, you are making a commitment to say what is true for you. This ties in with being vulnerable, which I find so fascinating because people think being vulnerable is a sign of weakness. Oh no, it's a super strength. Not a lot of people could feel comfortable sharing stories that would involve vulnerability. And lastly, to act with integrity means you are true. To yourself, and would do nothing that demeans or dishonors you. Great leaders speak with integrity to gain maximum credibility. It means walking the talk. A person who speaks without integrity—I don't know about you—but immediately the word trustworthiness. Disappears. Honesty and trust is an important factor to building quality and lasting relationships. And lastly, number five, treat everybody with kindness, not because they are kind-hearted, but because you are. Yes, I've already mentioned it in the first point to be kind to yourself. But the greatest gift you can give anyone else is to be kind. Not only being kind makes you feel better about yourself, which is a big plus, by the way. It will lead others to do the same. You are leading by example, leading, and it will pass forward. Here are three ways we can be kinder now. One, start by being kinder than you are now to yourself and to others. Two. Do something unexpected and thoughtful for someone else without expecting anything in return. Number three, be careful what you think and how you talk about others behind their backs. There are enough toxic news and negativity out there, and the world doesn't need any more of it. Kindness goes a long way and causes a ripple effect, and we need it more than ever right now. Well, there you have it. Those are the five tips that will make people treat you better. Let's review this. Number one, know your worth and be kind to yourself. Number two, understand and respect that your perspective is different from others. Number three, everyone has a story. Try not to judge. People People by their past. Instead, show support and some love. Number four: Always be curious. Listen with curiosity. Speak with candor and act with integrity. And lastly, number five: Treat everybody with kindness, not because they are kind-hearted, but because you are. Bottom line: How people treat other people is a direct reflection of how they feel about themselves. And how you make people feel says a lot about you. It shows your true self. Your words and actions reflect your character. And keep in mind that it also comes down to how you describe others. That would say a lot about you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of episode zero zero two. How you treat others says a lot about you. But I hope you enjoy the five tips that will make others treat you better. Thank you for joining me on the Dang Good Show. Make sure you visit my website, thedanggoodshow.com, where you can subscribe to the show on Apple, Google, or Spotify, or wherever it is, just so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you find valuable information on the show, I would greatly appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up and a good ratings on iTunes or whichever platform you're listening from. But even if you simply tell a friend about the show, that would totally help me out too. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm C Dang. Signing out. I'll catch you next time.